Hello and welcome to Mandobug Crafts. What's up guys? I'm Mandobug, but you could call me Amanda if you'd like. I'd like to take the time to say thank to thank to teach you. <laughs> I spent too much time with Emily. <laughs> That's how she says it. She goes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to all new and returning viewers. <laughs> um, also, I'd like to go ahead and say thank you to all of you who reached out to me. I didn't mention this in my last video, but all of you that reached out to me during my time off, I do really appreciate you guys checking in on me, asking me how I'm doing, and chit-chatting with me. I really do appreciate it. And I also appreciate those of you who that have reached out to me about um, my situation, which is not the best, but we're making it work. Um, I, I appreciate your guys' kind thoughts and kind words, so thank you. <laughs> thank you! <laughs> uh, so let's start the show out with something I've learned. Uh, so, you know, I'm staying here at my dad's and he has cable and on one of the lower channels, it, for us up here it's channel 12, I don't know if it's that channel all around but on Saturday mornings they have a crochet show and a knitting show and then some sewing shows and this Saturday I actually got the chance to watch the shows and on I think it was knitting daily actually it was crochet on knitting daily but um, this lady had made a hat and she finished off the final border in reverse crochet which I've never heard of and I've never seen before and it was so cool I haven't tried it um, but I'll see if I can find a link and link it in the uh, show notes for you guys if you're interested but the idea is basically that you are knitting or you're not knitting you're crocheting in the reverse direction than you normally do so instead of crocheting from right to left you're crocheting from left to right and it gives this kind of cool twisted look to it and I really want to try that out sometime um, and yeah, speaking of show notes, I'm going to try to not only have my show notes linked on my blog, but also I'm going to try to make the make sure to have the links in the description of this YouTube video as well. That way, if you don't want to go over the blog, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just go down through the description box. Or, you know, it, I'm going to leave them on the blog too, that way if you're watching from the blog, they're there as well. So, that's just, I guess, a little side note. Um, moving on to works in progress, I have been putting a lot of work into this cardigan. This is the Staring at Stars cardigan by Alicia Plummer, and it's super cute. Um, here's my progress so far. I've knit down the body and the front band, and I just have to finish the sleeves. Um, so quick about the the cardigan, I'm knitting it on US 6 and 7, so the body's on 7, ribbing on 6. Out of Madeline Tosh DK um, in oh I know the color Rainwater Rainwater it's a gorgeous color if I show you up close you can see it's got a lot of um, like it looks gray from far away but it's really like a bluish gray and you kind of have some blue come through and some of this like I'd almost say like a a green based gray come through it's it's super gorgeous and I'm really enjoying it even though I already have a gray cardigan I feel like this one is different enough that I won't look at them the same um, let me go ahead and show you guys how it fits also um, it is a paid for pattern in case you're wondering um, eat sleep knit was offered a discount code earlier when it first came out and I think now it's somewhere around six dollars um, I am knitting the 34 inch size which is the smallest size I do kind of wish there was a smaller size because the cardigan um, isn't supposed to fit like the the two fronts aren't supposed to touch and I my I met gauge and I'm knitting the pattern as written so I mean this should be the size for 34 and it I wish it was just a little bit smaller especially because I expect this to grow a little bit because my swatch grew a little bit but it's not like it's unwearable. I'm not drowning in the cardigan. Um, it's mostly just plain stockinette until you get down to the bottom. You have this nice little lace panel, um, which my yarn overs are off just a smidge. I uh, somehow I messed up and 
I was off by one stitch and instead of ripping the row back and fixing it I just fudged it and that made the first row just misaligned a little bit but it, it's not super noticeable enough for me to be really bothered by it so I just left it um, but yeah I mean I've really been enjoying this knit it's it's been a simple yet entertaining knit and I think I'm really gonna like the finished cardigan it calls for three-quarter length sleeves which I thought that I wasn't gonna like but I mean I'll find out for sure when I knit them but I think I'm gonna keep them I think this will be a great like spring and fall type cardigan um, the other work in progress I've been working on is a baby blanket at a Cascade 220 and I've been crocheting it with an H hook which is five millimeters and this is for a friend of mine who is expecting and we don't know the gender yet so I thought you know whenever whenever you wanna try to do something that's a little gender neutral what works better than a rainbow <laughs> so look at oh I love this pattern so I mean props to soul stitches on Instagram I saw her share her finished version of this pattern and it was so gorgeous I knew I would be making a baby blanket in the future, but after I saw hers, I'm like, this this is the pattern. I had actually planned on something else and changed my mind completely because this is such a gorgeous pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Let me look in my notes here. Uh, called the Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket by Celeste. Oh, well, I didn't write her last name. I think it's Young, though. I think it's Celeste Young. I, you know you know what I do. Put it down here. But, um... This is varying colors at Cascade 220, and I don't have the colors memorized because they're numbers, so it'll just all be linked. But, I'm, I mean, so far you can tell it's really big, and I still have green. I'm doing the green right now, and then I have two blues and two purples to go. So it should be a really good-sized baby blanket. I thought it would be great for... Uh, like tummy time and super cute for some like photos right like if you want to put your baby down on something cute for some photos this would be the blanket to do it on it's absolutely gorgeous it's super quick super easy and it's nice to pick up and put down because there's not much thought to it so moving on to finished objects let me reposition myself here on the bed <laughs> It's kind of weird recording on a bed, but I still think this is the best place to record in the house. Oh, and drinking some tea. I know it's summer, but it just sounded so good. It's not iced, it's hot. But I've kind of been feeling a little stuffy. It's been warm here these last couple days, and then out of nowhere today, it just got overcast and raining, and now I look outside, all the dark clouds are gone, and it's starting to look sunny. I, Washington. I don't... What's up, Washington? What's up with this? Because nobody else understands it. I mean, and even when it looks nasty out, it's been really humid. So, I don't know. All I know is my nose is a little stuffed, and my throat's a little sore, and this hot tea is what I need. So, finish objects. Oh, shoot. I didn't grab my socks. Well, hold on a second. I finished my socks! Okay, do you see how long these are? Can we take a minute to appreciate how long these are? <laughs> these were for the Eat Sleep Knit Space Socks Knit Along. This is um, one of their exclusive space colorways. It's Northbound Knitting in Nebula on a Superwash Fingering Weight Yarn. And the color, I absolutely love the color. This is Skew by Lana Holden. It's a free pattern. I love the pattern. Um, I did have to add to it, obviously, because there was a yardage minimum for the knit along. It was 300 yards, and I've never really paid attention to exactly how much yarn I use when I knit my socks. Well, it's not 300 yards, because my socks are not this long. These socks come up past my calf. They don't reach my knee, but they're like at least three quarters of the way past my calf ridiculously long socks. I mean, they'll be nice for the winter, but I don't generally like my socks this tall. Uh, I got really lucky because I didn't do any sort of calf shaping. I just left the same number of stitches all the way up and they fit fine. Um, I did do, you'll see 
right here is where the ribbing starts. So I did do a generous amount of ribbing just because I knew that they would be coming up so high. But 300 yards is kind of ridiculous for my size 6.5, sometimes size 7 U.S. women's shoe. So that's my, my only like, Meh. I didn't want to knit them this big, but it's not that I won't wear them. And it's not that I don't like the yarn or the pattern, so there's really not much to claim, complain about except except for the fact that when I wanted to bind these off, I couldn't so that because I wouldn't have met requirements. And of course I wanted to get my little extra yards towards my yarnathon and get some free bonus goodie stuff. I mean, that's how that works, right? Um, and then my other finished object. Um, objects, I guess. They're a little near and dear to my heart. So, we have to go back, 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 back. Back to before the podcast. So before I started podcasting, because I didn't even know there were such things as knitting podcasts, um, I didn't even knit yet. I just crocheted. And I had just moved to Georgia, um, and I was kind of like, I was with my husband, but we were away from everybody for the first time in our life. And I needed to pick up a hobby again and I knew how to crochet I had been doing it for years but I just, it just kind of fell off at some point so being out on my own um, and having so much free time I picked up crochet again and I was having a lot of fun with it and before and this was pre Ravelry too like Ravelry was around but I didn't know about it yet because in my opinion to me it seemed like Ravelry was more knitting based and so I never really wanted to sign up for it because you can't really see anything till you sign up. At least that's how it was when I was surfing the web. And everything seemed to be knitting and not crochet so I just kind of stayed away from Ravelry and instead I used like crochet, like crochet Pattern Central or maybe it was Free Crochet Pattern Central and it was like a directory of crochet patterns. All you saw was the name and just link after link after link. And you click on the link and it takes you to somebody's blog and there's a pattern there. So I started blogging because I was like, I can put up some free patterns. So I started blogging and I had a lot of fun with that. If you go back on Mandelbug Crafts blog, you'll see pre-podcast episodes, just blogs. And some of them were free patterns, which I eventually added to Ravelry. And um, they're just on my blog. They're not downloadable. But now that I've been on Ravelry, I'm much, I'm, I'm more versed in like the way patterns are laid out, and I know how to knit. And um, let's let's wrap this long story into something short. I have a couple patterns that are free on my blog that I want to update, get tested, and make into a PDF that is downloadable because I prefer downloadable patterns and I get like a little mad when I have to go to a blog with the exception of Nitty because they have really good free patterns and I'm like okay fine I will I will go to you Nitty and they have like a printer friendly version of their patterns too but for the most part I prefer something downloadable so I don't have to be connected to the internet and it can be on my tablet or my computer or my phone um, so that's what I'm doing and I started with um, this I called it the little boy beanie and I'm renaming it to three stripes of beanie and I added three more sizes so this and I haven't woven in any of the ends so you have to excuse that but this is the newborn size um, so there's newborn, baby, toddler, and child. Um, the newborn is really like a preemie newborn size, like I wouldn't recommend it for zero to three months. Um, but so there's this one, and the baby size is just a little bit bigger. You can see them next to each other. It's a little bigger around, just a tiny bit longer. I do have notes in my updated pattern on how to increase the length if you want that too and like the free pattern that I had on the blog before was just like hey this is what I did like some more of like a guideline kind of a pattern but it didn't have like gauge it didn't have notes it didn't have really anything now I've rewritten it with all of that stuff there's a gauge there's yardage requirements it's got everything um, but it's not tested so 
if you guys would like to test it, I would super appreciate it. I haven't had anyone test it. I was thinking about taking it over to the testers group. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in testing it. It doesn't take a lot of yarn. The newborn takes like 60 yards. The child takes closer to 100, I think. Um, 100 or 110. Um, and it's just worse to weight yarn on a uh, crochet size eye, which is 5.5 millimeter, or whatever you need to meet gauge, which I have included now. <laughs> but um, this is the toddler size. Now, I did mention in the pattern that you know, you really have to make the size based on the circumference that you want because these are just general sizes based on averages. And this toddler size hat fits both my 19 month old Emily and my 6 month old Jack. They have the same size head. So this is why you can't just go, oh I have a baby, I'm gonna make the baby size. No. Like if you have a baby with a big head like I do, then you need the big one. Or if you have a toddler with an average size head, you need the toddler. Like, you want to make based on what you know, if you know. You guys already know all that. But, um, and then this is the child size hat. It's just, like, it's just shy of, like, a woman's size, you see. It's just a little bit shorter and just a little bit smaller circumference, so. I thought about adding like a, a small adult like woman size or an adult man size but it's a lot of work adding all those sizes. I think I'm just going to keep it a kid's beanie for now um, and if somebody really likes the pattern enough they could probably figure out how to scale it up in size. But that's what I have. If you're wondering all the yarn. <laughs> the newborn is Mrs. Crosby steamer trunk in northern Perula and the accent color is Madeline Tosh vintage in denim. And then this is Cascade 220 in an orange and a yellow. I don't remember the numbers but they are the leftover orange and yellow from the baby blanket. And then this toddler size is Malabrigo Rios. Oh, I don't remember the color name. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I'll, I'll put it at the bottom. And then the accent color is the Madeline Tosh Vintage Denim again. And then this child size is also Malbrigo Rios in, I'll insert the colorway name because I can't remember. And then the accent again was Madeline Tosh Denim, uh, Madeline Tosh Vintage and Denim. So, yeah. <laughs> So I've been working on that. I still have three other patterns that I need to get through and fully rework. I have a, a feminine hat and then, which I'm also going to keep for kids. I have the newborn size. I'm going to do the same thing I have for this boy boyish hat. And then I have a baby headband that needs to be completely reworked because I did not know what I was doing when I offered that one up for free. And then I have a cross bookmark, which I think is fine. I just need to relook over it and turn it into a PDF. But yeah, so that's all of that. Moving on to check it out. So I would like to let you guys know of two new podcasts that I found out about recently. So both of these people that have become podcasters are um, viewers of Man Bug Crafts and also they both have actually donated to the podcast which is so awesome. They're both great amazing people. So the first one is called, I'll make sure I get this right, Simply Homespun Podcast and I have to make sure I say it right because um, she has an Etsy shop called Simply Handspun and I my mind gets the two backwards. So the podcast is Simply Homespun. The Etsy shop is Simply Handspun. And that's hosted by Kim. And sometimes she has her daughter Grace on there, which is absolutely adorable. I hope someday that Emily will get into crafts and she can have share some segments with me on here, which would be, oh my goodness, that would just make my life <laughs> complete. It would. Um, but yeah, she's got an awesome little podcast that she started out. She's on about episode 7, I think, so not super far in. Um, Kim's just 
a super awesome person. So I recommend that you check out her podcast. And I also recommend that you check out the Lou Cookie Knits podcast with Catherine and sometimes what I mean sometimes, a lot of times you get to see her cat Cookie who's super fluffy and I just want to give the kitty hugs through the camera because it's so fluffy. <laughs> um, but she is the designer behind Lou Cookie Designs and I think it's Lou Cookie Designs and not Lou Cookie Knits. Yeah, I think it's Lou Cookie Designs. Um, she had donated her patterns to the podcast before and I've knit some of her patterns. They're great patterns. Um, she does a lot of knitting. Um, so there's she has a wide variety of content on her podcast in the sense of how much she gets done. Um, but yeah, I mean, and her accent, I have to say, I absolutely love it. Um, being an American, I love any sort of foreign accent. She's got a German accent, and it's, I, I love to listen to it. I really do. Um, so yeah, I recommend that you guys go check out her podcast as well. Oh, before I forget, I think Kim of Simply Handspun is still doing an art sock knit along. So if you've got something in the works like that going on, definitely check that out. Um, I don't I was planning on participating but I don't have any ideas for that yet and I I don't get a lot of crafting done and I'm kind of trying to revamp my patterns right now so that's my focus besides the other two whips I have going on so but I'm gonna try to participate in her future knit alongs or craft alongs whatever she may hold in the future um, but yeah so that's what I have for check it out um, so ending with let's chat um, so, I don't know if you guys play Pokemon Go or not, but I have been playing, I have been playing Pokemon Go. I have. And I think it's such a great game. Even if you're not really into Pokemon, um, it, like, really gets you out there and going, especially for those of you that know. Um, I haven't been playing a whole ton. I'm only level 11, I think. Yeah, I'm really close to level 12. Um, but it's great because it gets me kid, me and the kids out to the park so I can go get more Pokeballs. Oh, I think Emily might be having a meltdown. I'll see if she wants to come say hi. I'm not really sure what she was having a meltdown about, but here she is. Oh, do you see yourself? Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> But uh, anyways, like I was saying, the po Pokemon Go gets us out of the house, gets us into the park, and um, not only that, it's been getting us out on walks, which Emily enjoys, Jack enjoys, and actually I've been doing some running too, so if you're not familiar, um, you get eggs from different Pokestops, and you have to walk to hatch the eggs, but you can jog as long as you don't like sprint, but I mean, who's going to sprint a 5k? <laughs> so... It's really got me out of the house and moving and Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's got Emily out of the house and moving. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that I've been playing that. I've been really enjoying it. I don't remember if I mentioned I'm Team Mystic, so any of you out there Team Mystic? Um, yeah. And then <laughs> something else I wanted to mention is, no, yeah, can you see yourself? Don't touch. Look. If you move right here, look, look. <gasps> Do you see yourself? <gasps> oh. Do you want to show everybody how you know where your body parts are? Yeah. Where's your nose? Good job. Where's your eyes? Oh, there they are. And your mouth? Mm hmm. <laughs> and your ears? And your hair? Where's your hair? There it is. <laughs> We've been doing uh, body parts, and she knows animals and animal noises. What sound does the lion make? Wow. Wow. Is that the lion? <laughs> but uh, anyways, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, I've been contemplating doing um, a sort of get ready with me where I show you guys how I do my makeup. Um, I've seen some other podcasters do it and I really enjoyed it and I have been watching beauty bloggers um, and I don't know, I enjoy watching them. I, 
But I was wondering if that's something you guys would be interested in. I could try to film something every now and then. Not really a tutorial, just a, if you were curious on how I did my makeup. Um, you could just watch and chat along and we could have tea and... Okay, Emily, let's go back out with Daddy. 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 Look at that. We just swapped one baby for another. Say hi, Jack Jack. <gasps> say hi, Jack Jack. Do you see yourself? <gasps> yeah. Yeah. He is my happy guy. He is such a happy baby. It is kind of ridiculous. He, like, is always smiling and always happy and it's... <laughs> so easy to take him places with Emily. She did not like the car seat. She cried a lot. She is in, like independent. She knows what she wants and she wants to do it. Jack is kind of along for the ride. He's kind of up for anything. So kind of like mommy. <laughs> but yeah, so if you guys are interested in a get ready with me, let me know. And then other than that, you know, I've just been doing the stay at home mom thing and Josh has been working and we're working on getting to a point where we can be out on our own and um, I did just sign up for some school um, some online classes they started yesterday and that's been going really well now that the kids are older it's getting a little bit easier they've been playing with each other and that makes like the biggest difference it really does so I'm hoping to just continue with that and I'm hoping to continue to try to podcast about once a month more often if I get the you want to jump 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 more often if I get the opportunity but as you can tell I got two little rambunctious babies that you know they really do keep me on my toes so um, <laughs> until next time guys <laughs> bye